I'm Father Theophon Whitfield. I am the, the priest at St. Nicholas Orthodox Church. And we are here to show you where we worship. So St. Nicholas as a parish was established in 1901 uh, by immigrants from what we would today call Western Ukraine. And the church building itself was built in about 1908. And over the years, we also um, mixed in many people who became Orthodox by choice, not necessarily just by birth, and also people from other Orthodox countries, um, not just those that are from Slavic countries, but also uh, Arabic and Romanian and, and uh, many others as well. Stained glass windows are not traditional to Orthodox architecture, uh, but the parish in the 1950s, I believe, commissioned the ones that are here. It's not typical to find stained glass windows in Orthodox churches unless there has been a kind of influence from the West. Whether you go to an Orthodox church that is Greek, Arabic, Romanian, Serbian, it doesn't matter where you go, you'll find an icon wall, an iconostasis is what we call it. But depending upon the particular Orthodox heritage, the architecture of that screen might be different. Churches that are in the Slavic traditions, Russian, Ukrainian, and so on, uh, very typically have a much more elaborate floor-to-ceiling iconostasis. So in the early church, when the church was moving from a period of persecution to sort of imperial favor, and many people were becoming Christians, they had to find large spaces in order to hold Christian worship. And so they converted in the large cities around the Mediterranean, Mediterranean the basilicas, or the large malls, really, of, of antiquity, into church buildings. And they were rectangular, with an apse, or a kind of semicircular space at the top, to allow for better vocal projection. And that's where they would hold their services. And uh, largely, uh, the basilicas would continue to function as the, the mall of antiquity otherwise. So people would bring the stuff that they had to sell and on and on and on. Many of the early church fathers, many of the bishops in the third and fourth, especially the fourth century, were fiery preachers. And often the people that were listening to what was being preached weren't particularly pleased with what was being said to them. So a barrier was created just to make sure that there was space between those that were celebrating uh, and those that might perhaps take offense. And over time, those, those barriers became decorated. That's kind of the practical origin of the iconostasis, but it certainly doesn't function that way at all today. The origin of Orthodox worship is very closely connected to the place where the martyrs would have been buried. Every altar has embedded within it the relics of martyrs, those killed for their faith in Christ. I'm not going to show them to you. So what we have in the church in terms of the structure, the bones of the church, uh, date to the origin in 1908. The major structural parts of the church are original to the building and in tremendous shape. Um, though immigrants who worked, though, though they worked all day long and, and sacrificed and came to the church um, uh, in the little bit of free time that they had to build this place, they spared no expense. Um, but they could afford very little in the way of traditional uh, Orthodox art iconography, uh, gilding, th things of that nature. So over the decades, there's been a need to replace what wore out, really. And so um, the Orthodox Church here, like, like many of them, have gone through those phases. And so, so what we have now is just the result of one of those phases of renewal that was undertaken to preserve the, the tradition that lies behind what ought to be in an Orthodox Church. Pews are not traditional to an Orthodox Church. 
uh, Orthodox churches might have some seating around the perimeter uh, of the interior, what we call the nave of the church. Uh, but besides that, the men and women and children stand for the entire entirety of the services. To look a little bit more American, pews were installed in many churches in the 1950s. Um, if you were part of a Russian tradition, the 1950s was a, was, was a difficult decade with the Red Scare and the anti-communism sentiment that was sort of permeating the culture. And so the parishes would adopt uh, items that would make them appear to be a little bit more American in terms of mainstream culture. So the, the stained glass windows date from about that era, the pews date from that era uh, in this particular church. And you would have seen American flags all over the place too in many of the churches for the same reason. The icons in any Orthodox church in terms of traditional iconography, if you are looking at an icon of the Dormition of the Mother of God, the falling asleep, the death of Mary, then by tradition that icon ought to look a certain way. You can't just put Mary any place. You can't just put uh, those around her in any place and you can't just put anybody you want to in the icon. And so those forms have been preserved certainly in the iconography that's here. Um, um, but you'd find the same forms in that icon in any Orthodox church. There's your tradition. Uh, we are the Orthodox Church in America. The Russian church came from somewhere, and its mother church came from somewhere. And you can trace that origin all the way back to Jerusalem. But each place that the church spreads to, the gospel and the worship life of the church takes on local forms. It has to make sense in that place. Rejoice, oh.